I rise today to express my appreciation and, and that of the Samoan people for the April 23rd visit of Vice President Mike Pence, who was accompanied by the Second Lady and their daughters to my home district, the United States Territory of American Samoa. Upon the conclusion of his historic 10-day visit to strategic Asian and Pacific partners, Upon his arrival to Pango Pango, the Vice President remarked that he was glad to be back on American soil. This historic visit to American Samoa marks only the third time a sitting Vice President has graced our shores and follows in the footsteps of past visits from Vice President Quayle in 1989 and Biden in 2016. Previous visits to our beautiful islands from White House dignitaries include First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt in 1943, President Lyndon Johnson in 1966, and President Jimmy Carter's son Jeffrey, who represented his father at the inauguration of our first elected governor in 1977, who happens to be my father, Peter Talley Coleman. Madam Speaker, pursuant to legislation I introduced in February, which was enacted by Congress and signed into law by President Trump on May 31st, Vice President came to American Samoa at my humble request to dedicate our Veterans Clinic to the memory of the late former representative of American Samoa, Congressman N. E. F. H. Falumavayanga, with whom the Vice President served the entirety of his tenure in the U.S. House of Representatives from 2003 to 2013. While in American Samoa, the Vice President also reviewed the troops comprised of reserve companies who are part of the 100th Battalion, 442nd Infantry of the U.S. Army, based in Hawaii. Headquartered at Fort Shafter in Honolulu, the 100th Battalion, 442nd Infantry is the only infantry unit in the entire United States Army Reserves. Samoan soldiers who are part of the battalion have fought and served bravely in conflicts from Desert Storm to Afghanistan and Iraq and others since the companies were relocated to American Samoa in 1980. Madam Speaker, American Samoa takes particular pride that Vice President Pence was able to celebrate with us the 109th anniversary of the establishment of the United States Army Reserves, which just happened to line up perfectly with his visit. While the Vice President's journey was well covered by international and domestic media, most outlets outside of the Pacific failed to report a significant statement he made, which I've called the Pango Pango Declaration. This important statement made on our soil was well noted and well received in the Pacific Islands. Specifically, the Vice President spoke of the challenges the U.S. faces in Asia and the Pacific and confirmed to the audience assembled that as Quoted by Radio New Zealand International and broadcast region-wide, we are here to stay, we're here for peace, we're here for the prosperity of all our people, and we are proud the American flag flies in American Samoa, period, close quotes. Madam Speaker, I ask that this Radio New Zealand International story be inserted into the record at this point. Without objection. Thank you. The People's Republic of China and other external powers are gaining visibility and inf influence in the region, including the neighboring independent state of Samoa. Due to the new influence of foreign interests in the region, members of American Samoa's ter territorial legislature, the FONO, just days prior to the Vice President's arrival, expressed to me during my appearance before a special joint session their concern about the rise of foreign influences in the region. I am certain the Pango Pango Declaration will help to allay their concerns and will be welcome in capitals across the Pacific from Port Moresby to Papaete, Tahiti. Moreover, Mr. Speaker, Madam Speaker, I anticipate that the Pango Pango Declaration will be a component of the evolving Trump doctrine that is under development by the administration, which I expect will be fully articulated when the U.S. participates in the Port Moresby APEC summit in November of next year. Madam Speaker, we in American Samoa recognize the strategic importance of our location in the center of the Pacific Ocean and are proud of the contributions we make to our nation's security. As always, we stand ready to do our part to advance the spirit of the Vice President's Pango Pango Declaration, which I expect will have a long-lasting and positive effect on the region. I want to once again thank the Vice President and the Administration for their attention to the Pacific Territories, a region that too often goes unnoticed in Washington. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I yield back the balance of my time.